What's going on everyone? It's your boy Ethan. Hope you're having a great day. Welcome back to another poker vlog. If you can't tell from the background behind me, currently at a hotel, I've got a lot of traveling coming up and got some exciting announcements before we get into the poker vlog. This September, I'll be traveling a lot. So if you're around the Austin, Texas or San Antonio, Texas area, I will be around Texas coming back and we've got a live stream and meetup game. On September 21st, 22nd, and 23rd, I'll be at Rounders Card Club in San Antonio. The 21st, I'll be playing on their live stream. On the 22nd, I will have a meetup game plan, so that'll be really fun. I'm gonna be playing all the stakes. And on the 23rd, I'll be back at Rounders playing for a bigger live stream. So it should be pretty fun games. On the 22nd is the main day, the meetup game, where I'll be there for a majority of the night and afternoon. We'll be playing all the stakes that they have available. So if you wanna hop into the 1 2, the 1 2 5, and the 5 5, whichever stakes you wanna play, come catch these punts in San Antonio. I'll be there for the entire afternoon and night. So it'd be really cool if you're from around the San Antonio area to come to Crown to come play with me, help support the channel, and catch some punts along the way. It's going to be a fun time. There will be action city all over the place. So those are the three dates. I will be in San Antonio, Texas. It'll be a lot of fun. But this vlog here, we play in a fun home game, a friendly 5-5 five five, as you could call it. But friendly as we buy in for $5,000 and we play in some ridiculously big pots. It's action packed. So I just wanted to announce my travel dates and meetup game at San Antonio at Rounders Card Club, September 22nd. And I'll be there 21st and 23rd as well for live streams. But let's get into the vlog. I'll see you guys at Rounders in September. Into this 5-5 friendly home game for $5,000, one of the very first hands we pick up. There's a $15 button straddle, we're playing six-handed, and I look down at queen 10 of diamonds in the small blind. There's an onion player who limps, action onto me, out of position, definitely gonna put in the raise with that $15 straddle out there, and I size to $75. The player next to act on the left in the big blind, three bets to 225. Cutoff makes the call and on to me closing out the action. Out of position, we have a playable hand, can fold sometimes, but obviously, you know, that is boring. I come along as well and we're off to a flop. The flop comes ace, nine, nine, rainbow. Here, a whole lot of nothing, I check and action actually ends up checking around. The turn is the 10 of hearts, so it's a pretty good card for us as we do have some showdown equity now. I think I make a mistake here by betting with middle pair essentially, our hand can't be too good. And I don't really know what I'm betting for value against, but here I bet out $200, only the big mind makes the call and we're off to a river heads up. The river comes another nine, so we got a full house with a pair of tens. I don't think our hand's that great. I decide to just check this one over to him. Now he throws out a bet of $300 and screw it. We toss in a chip for a call with a pair of tens. We might have gotten the case of the full house theorem as this player has pocket jacks. So nice hand, nice value bet on the river there. And we ship him a pretty healthy pot to start the session. The very next deal, picking up ace queen off suit, we're on the button, we're still playing six handed. There's an unknown player who limps, then the hijack raises to $50. Pretty large sizing, and we have a pretty good hand right now, so seeing how crazy the action here in this game can be, let's put in that three bet in position. I size to $200, folds around to the hijack player, and he makes the call. Going to a flop of king, king, three, rainbow. We got ace, queen, high, and we checks to us. I think our hand's gonna be good here and ahead a lot of the time. If anything, a small bet is in order to protect ace, queen, high, so I throw out $150. He makes the call for 150, so potentially could have some sort of lower pocket pair or potentially worse ace highs. Off to a turn, which comes a jack. He checks for a second time, and I don't really see too much merit in betting here in this spot, so I just check it back. Seeing a free river, which is the Bink 10. We've got Broadway, and this is very ideal and even better. This player throws out a bet of $500. He's got $1,100 behind, and yeah. I think we're gonna go for it. Although it is a paired board, he can have some full houses that snap us off, but let's play for stacks here when we have the runner runner Broadway. I go for it, I drip it all in, and he doesn't take too long before saying that he has to fold, lets his cards go, and I guess we'll take it regardless. Nice little rebound hand and a rebate from the last hand, giving up some money. We get it back in this one. Following hand, still six-handed, we pick up king nine of diamonds under the gun. I raise it up to $20. The cutoff makes the call, action onto the small blind, who three bets to 75. Big blind makes the call and he's in there, and you know what, we didn't come here to fold, especially against the small blind who could be good for action, so I call, cutoff calls, we're going multi-way to a flop. 
The flop comes queen nine seven. When action checks to me, small blind decides on a check. We've got middle pair in a dream, we're multi-way, and I really don't do this too often, but very game flow specific, I throw out a bet of $100. Well, we get action as the cutoff and big blind call, so it doesn't seem like our king nine can be ahead here too often, but when the turn comes, the bink nine of clubs, I mean, we're just seeing these perfect runouts so far. I throw out another bet, sizing a little bit smaller to $200 considering the size of the pot, and fun stuff. Both players call again. We're going three ways, still to the river, which comes a jack. The big blind checks to me and now sitting with trips. Definitely an interesting spot as some straight draws get there in king 10 and 10 8. King 10 doesn't seem too likely as it just had a gutter ball, but 10 8 open ended on the flop. Certainly could lose to that. But we've got trips, we've got a good kicker, some hands like Queen Jack could have improved, so I size up to $1,000. Action onto the cutoff player who thinks about it for a while and ultimately ends up folding. The big blind snap folds, and the cutoff says he wanted to shove 8 high, but didn't. Seemed like he had a hand like 8-6 for open end on the flop, didn't get there, but could have turned his hand into a bluff. Surely that could have put us in a pretty gross spot, but when people are thinking about shipping eight high as a bluff for a lot of money, you know you're in an action and fun filled game. In the next spot with ace king of diamonds, we're on the gun and open it up to $25. We get the cutoff and button to make the call onto the small blind player and he three bets to 75. This is a player who raises very often. We're in position of him and he has a 3k stack. So I think it's a pretty good spot to isolate the field, play heads up against this guy. I four bet and size up to $350, knowing that he can call with pretty much his entire range here. Action falls to the small blind and he does indeed make the call. So we're going heads up to a flop with a pretty good hand. The flop comes queen seven five rainbow. We totally whiff on this board. And interestingly enough, he throws out a bet of $300. I don't believe him. We have some backdoor opportunities. We have two over cards. This is a player who can be bluffing a lot. So ace king high just might be good. I'm not folding just yet. I call and see a turn. When the turn comes the 10 of clubs, we improve to a gut shot straight draw. So interestingly, he actually ends up checking this one. And I think with ace king high, I'm happy to check this one back. And we're off to a river. The river is the magical jack. Once again, runner, runner, Broadway. This time, though, it's not a paired board and we just have the nuts. And even better, he leads out on this river for $500. Oh boy. I don't think I'm folding here with the absolute best possible hand. I'm going to size up for a raise and it's going to be a big one to $2,000. Given the line he's taken, I'm not sure what kind of hands he can have, but if he did stumble into two pairs somehow, I think that's just a dream scenario. But facing this $2,000 raise, he ends up letting his cards go and fold. Still low, chips get pushed our way. We win a pretty big pot here in this 5-5 game. In the next one with King Jack off suits, we're in the cutoff and there's an ungun player who limps, plus one raises to $50. The player on my right makes the call. He seems to be playing pretty solid here so far and we're in position, gonna make the call as well. Ungun calls and theme of this video, multi-way, maybe a big pot brewing. When the flop comes, jack three, six, two clubs, the plus one puts in a continuation bet of $150. The player to my right in the hijack makes the call. I have top pair, pretty good kicker, certainly could raise sometimes, but it seems a little too thin. I decide on making the call myself, and we're going three ways to a turn, big pot brewing so far. When the turn comes, a king that is pretty sick now sitting with top two pair, and unfortunately action kind of slows down a little bit. Everyone checks to me and or definitely not checking this one back with top two pair. I decided to put in a bet of $350. This plus one player who bet on the flop folds and now onto this hijack player who thinks for a while. He's got about $1,600 in his stack and after thinking things over and going over his options, he decides to put in a check raise to $800. He committed half of his stack, he got about $800, same bet behind, and it's time to get it in with top two pair. If he somehow slow played a set, so be it, good for you, you're just going to get all of our chips, but I rip it all in, and he calls. Got a really big pot with top two pair, and I flip over my hand, and he also shows king jack as well. 
Looks like we're gonna be chopping this one up. We go to a river, which is inconsequential. Chopping up Justin's money. It's a good time here at this table. Chop up Justin money. <laughs> so it seems like we're only playing big pots here at this fun 5-5 game. Picking up pocket aces under the gun. There's no better time to do it. I raise it up to $25. The player on my left makes the call. Now action onto the cutoff, and he doesn't disappoint with bringing in the action. He puts in the three bet to $115. Action folds to me, and we're playing with the big stack. This cutoff player has a bigger stack behind. We're definitely not going to be flat calling this, given the stack depth of over six, dollars $7,000. I'm going to put in the four bets and size up to $400. We're out of position, we wanna get more money in the middle, and this cutoff player ends up making the call. We're going to a flop, it's gonna be a big one. The flop comes queen 10, eight, two clubs. All things considered, not really the best board. It's really connected, pretty wet. So I decide to down bet to $300, and he does something interesting. He kind of puts my head into a blender when he puts in a raise, but it's a min raise of 600. We're obviously never folding here, but I'm a little suspicious. He can't have a lot of pocket queens. He has all the sets in range for sure. Holding the ace of clubs, he can't be doing this with the nut flush draw. So I'm not folding here. I'm not really going to be three betting as well with one pair. I decide on just making the call and evaluate a turn. When the turn comes, the seven of clubs, we have the toppest of pairs and the nut flush draw now. I check to him play and flow, and he throws out a bet of $1,000. Looking at his stack, he's got about $2,500 behind, and we've got quite the decision to make, and we're in quite a doozy spot. Obviously, we're very scared of top set pocket queens, as he has that, but we also can improve as we do have the nut flush draw. So with one pair, it's a decision between just ripping it all in, or we can just call and play some rivers out of position. I debate it over for a long, long time as this pot is getting pretty big. I ultimately decided to just make the call. A little bit unsure in game, but I think in hindsight, ripping it all in might make the most sense. Anyways, um, we just make the call and we're off to see a river. The river is a good one in the king of clubs. So sitting with the nuts now with the ace of clubs, we're out of position and I go deep into the tank as to figure out what is the best way to get the most amount of money in. Given the line that he's taken, it feels like this player just doesn't really have too many one pair holdings right now. Felt like he was playing for value the whole way, so if he did have a hand even as weak as king-queen with two pair, if I put in a very small block bet, he might be able to call. I'd want to get as much money as possible, so maybe somehow he has like a jack of clubs with queen-jack maybe, or even a small block bet would get a hand like a top set of queens to call as well. Anyways, I decided that checking wasn't the right play. I bet out small sizing to 1500 and he thinks about it for a while and ends up making the fold, showing us ace-queen. So it's really nice to win a 4k pot, but seeing that he had ace-queen had him totally dominated, looks like we didn't need the last club on the river. Maybe shoving that turn would have been the best play, although it would have been for a lot of money. Still, we ship a $4,000 pot away and we take it down. The next hand after that, it's action central here. We have 10-7 of spades in the cutoff and there's a $15 button straddle. On the player limps for $15, the low jack raises to 50, and we can't always play premiums, right? With 10-7 suited, I make the call for 50 and gamble the button and on the gun player call as well. So multi-way with the big pot brewing. The flop comes jack 10, three, two diamonds in the heart. The low jack throws out a bet of $100. Action folds to me and we've got a pair here against Justin. Probably not gonna fold too many pairs. I make the call and the button comes long as well. So now we're going three ways to a turn. The turn comes the five of hearts and there's two flushers out there given how this table has been playing so far and Justin checks to me. I think sometimes there's a slim chance that second pair can be good here. So I throw out a really small block bet. I size to $250. But for $250, both players make the call rather quickly. So not feeling as great about the situation. But we're off to a river, which obviously comes the magical 10 of clubs. Not only do all the flush draws break out, but we improve to trips and basically just sun running this entire session right now. Low jack checks and I sized up to a bet of $800. The 
The button doesn't take too long before making the call. He's all in for less, maybe around $600. Justin gets out of the way and folds. We show trips and we get more chips pushed into our stack. It's always nice to run hot in a big game. In the next interesting spot, picking up eight, nine of diamonds and plus one, there's an only gun open to $20 and onto me. Definitely just gonna make the call here versus an under the gun open. Could be a little tight here in Nitty, but playing so deep, I just call, folds around to the small blind who calls, and now onto the big blind who three bets to $100. If you've been paying attention to this video, you know that this $100 three bet isn't gonna get much credit, not gonna get much respect. The only gun player and myself make the call. We're going three ways to the flop of ace, king, jack, one diamond. Action checks to me, we're in position, nice to play this hand here, but with a whole lot of nothing, I just check this one back and we're off to see a turn. The turn comes the queen of diamonds. So any 10 is Broadway, but we do improve to a flush draw. The big blind throws out a bet of $200, only unfolds and now onto me. Definitely gonna see a river here against the guy that could pay us off if we hit a diamond. I make the call and we're off to a river, which comes the three of clubs. Brick City card, and interestingly enough, now he checks nine high in a dream. Obviously, nine high can't win. And against this big blind player who did three bet pre flop, I think I should have a lot more tens than him. So let's go for it. I size up to $350. Onto the big blind player who thinks and asks if this call will be a punt. Well, it seems like someone's gonna be punting here if there's a call. It will most likely be myself as always. He ends up making the call and I just show him nine high with pride. Justin shows us the king five off suit. Guess we can't win them all. Nice hand, Justin, nice call, and also very nice three bets pre-flop. For the last hand of the night, we end up playing a $25 PLO double board bomb pot. Five ways to two boards we pick up king, queen, five, seven. Board number one, flop comes queen, six, seven. Flop number two comes five, five, four. What a ridiculous spot to be in as we have two pair on the top board and trips on the bottom. When action checks to me, I'm gonna throw out a bet of $200 and looks like everyone likes their cards. Three players make the call. So still from five ways to the flop, going four ways to two turns. The turn comes the eight of diamonds, then the king of diamonds. So still we have two pair up top and we end up boating up for what is the second nuts on the turn. Multi-way, we're out of position here. I debate between betting or checking, but in this game, I'm gonna throw out a bet. I size to $600. Action onto the button player who ends up raising us to 2,000. Small blind next to act, ripped his entire stack in there for a total of $920. And now back onto me. We essentially have the nuts on the turn as there's only one combination of pocket kings. So I think we have that board locked up. We have two pair on the top board that we don't feel amazing about, but certainly still have four clean outs, hopefully, to scoop that one. So this button player has about $3,400 behind this guy who raised a 2000. So it's a total of about $5,400 in his stack. And obviously, you know the channel, we're never folding the nuts here and also the ability to improve on the top board and scoop this whole pot up. So I think about it for a while, it's a pretty big and costly decision. I think we're gonna play a massive, massive 12K plus pot here in this 5-5 game. So let's just go for it, we're not folding. I rip it all in, hoping to get all the money in there and expecting to chop a lot of the time and he ends up snap calling. I'm hoping for a chop and we're going to two different rivers, three ways, all in, in this massive pot totaling over $12,000, $13,000. Let's try to hold or at least take half of it. River number one comes an ace. We don't improve, still sitting with two pair. River number two comes the three of diamonds. So no improvement there as well. The small blind shows us jack nine, six, seven, the button with the $5,000 stack shows us king, nine, eight, five. We show our hand and me and the button end up chopping board number two and the button actually scoops board number one with the turn straight. So as much as we thought that the board was great for us, it was even better for him and he spikes the gin turns on both cards with the straight up top in the same hand as us as the second nuts on the bottom. 
we get quartered in a massive pot here. It's pretty gross. And after everyone does all the math and calculating how much who owes who, we end up losing about $3,500 in this hand. Makes a pretty big cut into our winnings and profit after this game. What a ridiculous cooler. But on top of that, what a ridiculous way to end the vlog. So unfortunately, it is painful to say that that very last hand of the night where we do the little double board PLO bomb pot, stacks were gonna get in, but didn't think it was gonna be the two biggest stacks of the table colliding against each other and finding a way to get quartered kind of hurts. Bad news was that, but the good news at least was that we ended up making money and making profit on this session. We're in the game for $5,000 out of the game for a total of 68.80, so profit of 18.80 there. I mean, we ran really well and just sun ran pretty much the whole majority of the session until the last one where we run into some ridiculous cooler. Um, yeah, who knew he had the second nuts on both board? What a crazy hand. 12, 13,000 dollar pots not going our way, but still made money. It is what it is. Thank you so much for watching this video. Leave a like if you made it this far to the very end. All the support is always much appreciated. And yeah, we've got some more Vegas vlogs incoming. Going to be in Vegas for another week or two. So definitely got some more sessions lined up. And uh, going to hop into some crazy cash game action as well. So thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Peace.